So if let's say I'm trying to find for some reason a 92% confidence interval and I want the critical Z value at that point. So why in the world would I want this? Let me double check that this is the question they're asking. Where did it, oh, there it is, top of four. Uh, oh, so really quick, critical T values, oh, not doing that, are divided into one tail and two tail. I, did I bring up the wrong thing? No, I didn't. So this could be one tail or two tail. And it will be, let's see, one tail will be Z, alpha. It's actually, um, it is usually the Greek alpha, you know, alpha, omega, all that nonsense. That's what they use. It's just the alpha value. So alpha values, before we go into it, is the level I'm okay with accepting. Uh, it has to do with something called type one and type two errors. We will get to it. But right now, the KISS model, it is what I'm okay with being wrong by. In this case, I'm okay with being off by 8%. Right, because if I'm looking for the 92% confidence interval, my alpha, so alpha, uh, let me get rid of that, that's kind of annoying. The So it would be one minus CI. Easiest way to find it. So in this case, it'd be one, my, uh, one minus 0.92. That would be my alpha. So, but it depends on what it's saying. So this is a Z alpha. Z alpha is if you're doing one tail. So one tail is if I only like, okay. If I'm trying to get to some place on time and they have a cutoff time, I'm looking for a one tail because I can be early, but if I'm late, I'm host. I'm looking for a one tail test because I want to be sure I'm there on time. A two tail is, well, you can be, you know, just tell me if you're 30 minutes early or late. That's a two tail. I can be on either direction and it's not a big deal. And your question depends on your situation. And those are written as Z alpha divided by two, which is the actual alpha symbol. So Z alpha would be this, it is literally one minus your confidence interval. Z alpha divided by two is equal to one minus alpha divided by two. And what you're doing, uh, I can't really do it there, is when you're doing this, one would be 8% here, the other one, Like that. So online, I wrote bell curve. On one side, I wrote in red 8%, which is our Z alpha. And then next to it, I wrote in blue Z alpha divided by 2, which is at 4% on both sides. So we have basically the same amount, it's just on both ends. So, yay, background. So how we do this, oh yeah, 
is actually really easy. So critical value. So equals norm dot s dot this of a value. Oh, what is it wanting? Oh. Oh, yeah, it's a, uh, wait. Are they doing a dist or? Norm. Uh, wait, I already had that. Let me stop doing that. That's not right. Uh, I've been checking something real quick, by the way. Oh, I did do the wrong one. It's norm.s, not this. Sorry, not norm. Norm.s. In. So this looks at the inverse. It takes a probability and turns it into the two way. So on this, you're going to have to use a little bit of uh, mental power, brain power, because you have to ask, which way am I going? So remember on a Z score here, let me actually get this up because I don't feel right to do this with just you guys. So let me do, what was it, Jamboard? So on, do share, yes, Jamboard. On this, so we've done, we have a normal distribution. So on here, you would have your mean. And this way, really, do I have, yes, I do. Well, Z is positive. And on this way, around Z is negative so remember that on a distribution on a z-score that's what always happens so what's happening here go back to Excel is I get negative values. The reason I get negative values is because I am telling Excel, I'm looking at 4% and 8%. And those are at the far left end of my distribution. The only issue with that is I don't always really want that. And sometimes I want the far end. So you have to think, where am I going at? And you can actually just change this to 0.92 and get the same number, but positive. So ask yourself, and to me it's easier to just change this number up here, or I can do uh, confidence interval 0.92 and just do this, one minus this. Now if I change that all I want, it changes everything around it. So I change it to 0.95, everything changes. So this is the critical value. If I want to do I really cared and it was bugging me, I could do ABS of critical value. So 
form dot s dot n like this. And then it would just always give me a positive value. So this could be left, and this would be right. And it's up to you to figure out which one you want to do. Am I doing a left tail? Am I doing a right tail? Okay. So that's the code for it. And then all you have to do is change that to your confidence interval. So 0.4 changes all your values. Okay. Once again, yes, I will upload this when we are done. Uh, but that's just a quick way to do a confidence interval lookup for your critical Z scores. Well, let's see what else was in here. Mm. Point estimation. Okay, I have to remember point estimation. Uh, textbook. And the textbook takes forever to load up. I wish they could just give me that. Really? Wait, seriously? So point estimation is just going to be equal to your estimation. Um, so in this, so in this one, let's say I want to do, let's do, I'm going to name these to make life easier for people. This is critical Z. Uh, proportions. Nonsense. So this one. Uh, first thing we need to do is, so this is, we're going to say what we need. So we're probably going to need uh, population proportions first thing. So to find this, you need to find P hat. P hat is just the proportion of successes versus trials. So success and trials. So successes, uh, let's say going on, this is on question five, by the way. Um, it's a research institute asked if people felt vulnerable to identity theft. So I'm using different numbers. Let's say 450 people said they felt vulnerable out of 835 people. So this, your point estimation, is, should be equal to this divided by this. And let me see, I can show. Um, after this, you would have to do margin of error. So this is just nothing more than that more times that. From here, or that, sorry, 450 divided by 835. The margin of error is the next thing you would need. The margin of error, I do believe they just want you to do essentially the confidence interval. Where's the formula? I know it's, oh, I'll just look it up. The textbook is terrible. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first thing we need to do is to find the critical value. So we are uh, confidence interval will need to be in half, which would be, let's do, uh, so I throw out a number, I don't really care. Give me a confidence interval, I don't really care. 88. I will wholeheartedly still go from over here. So whatever it's asking for stuff like this, where it has a population proportion, it's always going to be alpha divided by two. So don't even, you know, bother. So it needs to find Z alpha divided by two and this right here. So equals one minus a confidence interval. Oh, I'm to put in this. A one minus E6, and then divide that by two. That's my Z alpha. So my critical value is going to be equal to, because I learned my lesson last time, the absolute value, because I want to look at the positive one of my norm uh, s dot n this and all i would be doing is i'd be going on to that t table or that z table that you had i just don't want to do that because it's annoying and if i just make this i don't have to do it Uh, wait, what? Do we not have that information? Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I do this. So I'm trying to make sure. So for margin of error for proportion, yes, I remember this one. What I need to do uh, down, is the formula is Z times square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N. So let me go back to this and share it with people. What that actually looks like because, yeah, fun times. That's not a Toby. And I really wish I had my, really, yeah, that space. Minus P hat. And there we go. So that's what we're doing. So <clears throat> we have that. We have P hat, which is over here. So the rest. So we need one. P hat, one minus P hat, which is that wrong. One minus, oh, minus that. Then 
margin of error. So I take my critical value times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. And I need to make sure that's correct. So it does not look correct. And we find out the margin of error of 0 0.026. So from here, we can do upper and lower confidence intervals. So at this point, I can take equals my point estimation plus my margin of error and my point estimation minus my margin of error. So between, if that doesn't make sense, oh, we seven. So my true mean with an 88% confidence would lie between 0.56 and 0.51. So I could safely say that more than half of people are afraid of identity theft. And that all you have to do is to change these guys. Let me go ahead and highlight them because I know people are mm, change these and this to be what you need it to be and everything will just follow along. Because I'm more interested in can you interpret, and so is the computer, sadly, what in the world those are. Did that answer questions that you would have had on Friday? Okay. No. Same question. Okay. What is it going to be? Uh, the lower confidence interval was your point estimation minus your um, margin of error. So I'm going to do another one with um, data instead of proportions because that's where it kind of gets weird. And you had to have a little bit more information, like actual data. I can't really even cheat. What is it? Is it? Oh, copy the clipboard. That'd be better. So, any questions on this before I get to um, data, like actual data instead of proportions? The Z score, or what is it? Or what? Oh, this Z score right here. Critical value. Better? So, your next one will require you to have data. That's all there is to it. Um, so, they give you president's data. And there's really no way around this. Uh, sample portion of presidents. So they, they give you, okay, there's two ways to do that, but whatever. Wait, 
inferred to the second person given above. And the proportion of presidents who are taller than the opponents. Oh, so this is the same thing. So if you have something like this, what you can do is so this is going to be a weird one, but you could generally use this whenever you're trying to compare stuff. If I like if else statements, I'm a coder, sue me. If this is greater than this, I want to do taller, else, shorter. So what I'm telling the computer, you can steal this, is I want you to count if the president was taller than his opponent, and if you're not, I want you to tell me he was shorter. That's all it's doing. And then I copy it all the way down. And then there's this wonderful thing. So I know there's, so trials would be 20, successes it would be, there's a thing called count if. I can choose a range, which is all the things I'm looking at. And then I want to do the criteria, which would be taller. And it tells me how many were taller. So instead of having to go through and plug all that stuff in, I use the computer to do it for me. And from here, I can just go in and plug in stuff from there. So it's still the same thing, it's still proportional. But once again, I, I don't expect you guys to be able to do that, but I hope you guys can steal it from me and make your lives easier. Um, proportions. Oh. So for pain. Ooh. So if you are given, let's see, uh, let me think about it. finding proportions. Sample size given error. This is a weird one. I want to make sure I get this correct. If the e text would ever pop up. You know what, this is gonna take forever. I'm just gonna Google it. I know there's a formula. Proportions. Need to. Okay, really, that's does not helpful. The textbook is not the best, by the way. Oh, so to find this, that's a lot easier. 
By the way, when you want to find a good website and you're trying to just find the stupid formula and you don't want to deal with the textbook because it, it's not the best. Statistics how to usually cuts out a lot of BS and goes right to the point of the formula. So to find sample size, you need P, Q, Z score, and error. So Q, I didn't really talk about it. This is one minus P because we don't like actually doing you know hard things. We like to make things easier than all possible. And from that, we can find N. So the formula for this is Z squared times P times Q divided by E squared. So just to get this in, we can do this squared times this times this divided by this squared. And it's going to give me an error because I don't have anything in it yet. So this is off of question eight if you're following at home. Um, we, somebody wants to develop a software system, is planning for the operation systems that he will use. He needs to estimate the percentage of computers that use the new OS. Uh, so the computers must be surveyed in order for a, let's call it 95% uh, confidence interval that his estimate is an error by no more than, two, let's call it four percentage points. So given that we have one thing, four percentage points would be 0 0.04 right there. 95% confidence interval. So we need to do z score, critical z score. So we need to have that confidence interval and then the z score from that. So for this, it would be norm s dot m. Of this call, it's going to do one minus that value. So 0.95, except I also want to do it because I'm looking for two tail. That right there. Now, normally I would put the absolute value here, but since this is going to square my z-score, that's going to automatically make it positive and I don't want to do more formulas than I have to. So this is equal to this. So this point will always be one minus that. And I have everything but the top thing. So what, a general rule of thumb, if you got if you're doing sample size and you have no values, you put 0.5 for your p hat. The reason why, because a lot of people who have a lot more time than I have found out this gives you the biggest sample size. And if you don't have numbers, you want to be as sure as you can. And I can, you can play around with it. So 0.5 will give you that you need 600 computers. If I'm like working with Windows dominance and I'm assuming like 70-ish percent, you can see the numbers go down. If I'm going from Mac's perspective and I have, say, 20% because Linux is a thing, the numbers go down even more. So literally the worst one you could do 
is 50%. So if you have no numbers, you put in 50%. So all you have to change for this one is this guy, this guy, and that guy. The E3 formula is norm.s.n of one minus E2, which is our confidence interval, divided by two. And it's divided by two because we're doing a two-tailed test. And that just looks up the critical Z. Normally, yes, I'd make that a positive number. I don't care because over here, I'm going to square it. Okay, is everyone's brain fried? Or do you wanna keep on going? General, general, general question. So you wanna keep on going or your brain's fried? Um, fry. Okay. Um, no one has any objections. You guys can go. I am going to go ahead and shut it off. I will fix the, uh, the whole kerfuffle with, um, uh, loud cloud. So don't worry. Uh, does anyone know if the posts are up for today or did I get that far ahead or no? Okay. Then I'll get the